Good afternoon and a very warm welcome to all of you. My name is Dharmendra Kanani. I'm Director of Insights at Friends of Europe and moderator for this next in, in the session, in season, of our series of Debating Africa, um, looking at that critical, crucial relationship between the EU and Africa um, in terms of key particular, particular infrastructure, social, economic issues that we want to debate over the term. Um, last week, we were looking at uh, green recovery and climate, et climate finance, etc. Uh, today, we're looking at digital and the opportunity of digitalization, the fourth industrial revolution, whichever you call it, but fun 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 fundamentally it's about digitalization of societies and how digitalization provides the pathway for both conf conf con continents to transform their economic agenda and their social agenda, uh, notwithstanding the politics of it. But here today we are to debate that particular issue and what are the opportunities, choices, barriers, and challenges that we need to overcome as we think about uh, digitalization for both the EU and most importantly Africa. What are the, what are the opportunities? I will well warmly welcome our Zoom audience. Those of you who are on Zoom, you'll know to stay mute um, until I call you in. If you want to raise a question or an issue, use your digital hand. We will find, if you don't know where it is, look under participants and you'll find it there. And then raise that so my colleagues can inform me that you want to raise a question uh, or a query. We, I also want to warmly welcome the people who are on live stream watching this also. Uh, you are not going to be forgotten. If you wish to ask a question, uh, raise a question or an issue, please use our social media platform, hashtag debating um, EU Africa, uh, sorry, debating Africa EU, um, and you'll be able to get through and our colleagues will pick it, pick it up. So that's the kind of technical aspects of it. We have an hour with you, all of you, and we have the opportunity to um, engage with uh, and discuss these, this very important issue that's going to actually transform all our lives, whether you're wherever you are in the world. In the next five years, um, digitalization is going to do things to us in terms of how we consume, behave, get jobs, and the whole works. Our societies will be transformed. So what are the issues here for both continents, but most importantly, to hear from the um, uh, colleagues and uh, fellows uh, uh, and citizens from Africa about what the issues are in this relationship. I firstly want to welcome Jutta, Jutta Ulfleinen, who is a, one of our anchors for these debates, um, who has been uh, there from the start and is basically uh, taking the lead from the EU side that will always be in these debates to be able to introduce the importance of the topic and then, then we'll move on to others. So Jutta, are you there? I'm here. Hello. Good to see you. Good to see you. Again. A very warm welcome. Good to have you. <laughs> Every on Thursday we meet each other. This is a great day. <laughs> Absolutely. Thursdays is our, our debating Africa. So it's very good to have you here with us again. Um, today, as, as, as you heard, it's about digitalization. From your perspective, you're leading this of cross cabinet on these issues. From your perspective, why is it important to have this conversation uh, in, on digitalization from your perspective? Thank you, and uh, it's really great to be here. I, I really think that our last Thursday discussion on, on Green Deal and uh, Green Transition was, yeah. uh, was very good, very valuable, and I'm looking forward to have the same kind of discussion today on, on digitalization. I'm also extremely uh, delighted to have uh, with us today my, my colleague, Commissioner Terry Preton, who is a star regarding digitalization so he knows everything yes, and I'm, I'm looking forward to, to hearing also uh, his contribution and his remarks. I'm also very delighted uh, to have Commissioner Abu Daid from the African Union Commission mm -hmm. again today uh, with us. I would say a few words about, uh, about di digitalization. I would say that the digital transformation will be one of the key pillars uh, of the recovery from the COVID-19 pandemics. And this will be the case in EU, but also across the world and especially in Africa. Digital transformation represents three key opportunities. Mm -hmm. Firstly, uh, digital coverage supports directly the economic growth. The, actually, the World Bank estimates that reaching universal internet access in Africa would increase employment by 7 to 13 percent. 
digital transformation means opportunities for investors, e-services, e-finance, flexible working methods, and of course, strong public services. Secondly, a digital transformation is an opportunity for our citizens, for all of us. It provides youth with more skills to access a competitive job market, improves public services, and enables citizens to work or study from home, which we have noticed uh, this uh, during the time of this pandemic. Thirdly, the digital transformation and the green transition go hand in hand, like we discussed a bit uh, also last week. They make one another more successful. So smart agriculture, improved food safety, and satellite technologies monitoring the impact of climate change are good examples of that. So with all its possibilities, we, can, we also have to be careful. Cybercrime or spreading disinformation campaigns and hate speech are harmful to human rights and democracy. And we have to be aware of that. So we have to promote a fair digital transformation. And I think this could be a topic for our discussion today. Thank you. Over to you. Yuta, thank you very much. And that's a very good structure for this conversation. I really appreciate that, uh, those int uh, introductory remarks. I'm going to swiftly mm -hmm. turn to uh, Amani, Commissioner. Uh, Amani, welcome. A very warm welcome to you. You've, this is your, I think, your third stint. Also, it's good to see you every Thursday, uh, as we have Indeed. with Yuta. So a very <laughs> warm welcome to you. So. You've heard that, 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 that interesting framework set out by Yuta, but when we look at the data, um, Amani, in Africa, you know, in terms of the population growth that's likely in the next 30 years, we know mm. that, you know, in the next 15 years, some quarter of a billion, if not more, 15-year-olds are going to enter the, the working, you know, the labor market. We know about issues of coverage, the differentiation mm. of the percentage, low percentage mm. of infrastructure su support, but also coverage. Is Africa up for digitalization? Um, uh, first of all, thank you very much for inviting me again. Always a pleasure to join these very interesting and important debates. And let me also uh, uh, express my uh, uh, delight uh, uh, and honor to join a distinguished, such a distinguished panel. And uh, here with the two commissioners from the EU and my brother, uh, Lassina Kone from uh, uh, Smart uh, Africa. Uh, the answer to your question, is Africa ready? You know, uh, 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 last year I was asked the question whether uh, Africa will, will achieve the digital transformation strategy set by the African Union by yeah. 2030, as, uh, as we uh, put in that uh, strategy. My answer was that we'll do it before 2030. And I still okay. uh, stick uh, to, uh, to what I, uh, with what I said. We'll do it before 2030. I said that last year when COVID-19 did not hit uh, the world as it is. This pandemic, uh, uh, surprisingly, uh, it became the single uh, 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 best catalyst for digital transformation in the world, and especially in Africa. So uh, now the race is on, and it's not about whether we digitalize or not, it's rather uh, uh, how and how fast, and it is really uh, uh, encouraging to see across the continent, governments and private sector, everyone, they're reviewing their business models, their uh, infrastructure, the, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the platforms they're having to make sure that they are wider and more accessible and that they are digitalized. So that is uh, 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 one. Two, uh, uh, yes, I mean, the technology is becoming is spreading fast. The continent still, uh, and despite the challenges, is uh, uh, the fastest uh, in terms of connectivity. I mean, uh, the numbers. Uh, 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 now, we have a serious impediment when it comes to connectivity still, because only the third of the continent is uh, connected. So we are expecting the next billion to come online. As much as this is a challenge, this is also a fantastic opportunity uh, for investment in, in the continent. And with that goes hand in hand, uh, the skills and the upskilling of our people, and uh, especially yes. the young, mm -hmm. still the, the young continent and the youngest, and will continue to be the youngest. Yes. Uh, 
someone have their microphone open? Sorry, c excuse us for that. Please do continue. <laughs> it's all right. We'll sort it out. Uh, uh, now, uh, on the, the, the challenges, though, uh, 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 one of the main challenges is actually related to uh, the previous session, energy. Mm -hmm. Remember, digitalization works on energy, and the continent is still very much hampered when it comes to uh, uh, energy infrastructure. But the way we see it is that they are mutually uh, 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 enriching because now, also with the advent of this digital uh, uh, technology, it is give, bringing to the continent new solutions, smart solutions, and the way we drafted uh, not only the EU strategy, but also the work that was done with the European Union last year on the EU-AU partnership for digitalization. We said smart by default. So mm -hmm. we are developing the, the across sector uh, 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 as smart as possibly uh, we can. And with that, I mean, uh, uh, we are not talking in Africa about the fourth industrial revolution. You probably hear depicting, you know, the part of Europe or some other parts of the world. For us, probably it's going to be our second or third because this technology is allowing the continent to leap forward. So the okay. second, mm -hmm. other than the mm -hmm. energy, is also prices, the affordability. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, and uh, remember, it's still very expensive for exactly. the continent uh, for our people to be yes. connected. Uh, 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 a statistic came out last, uh, last month uh, that what it does cost to have one to be... Uh, uh, um, uh, to have one gigabyte of data in india it costs nine cents and they are the number one in the world indeed you know how much does it cost in africa tell us 27.4 uh, uh, point 41 dollars in malawi 27.22 in benin 23.33 in chad and 13.3 87 in Botswana, and they are the most expensive countries when it comes to data. So that's we're talking 300 times more exactly than what is paid elsewhere. And despite that, our young people are providing the continent with incredible, creative, innovative solutions throughout the sectors and through the more than 640 uh, 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 tech hubs that we're having. Uh, here in Africa. So for all kinds of reasons, and despite all the challenges, and thanks to all the <laughs> challenges, I am convinced we're going to do it even before 2030. Okay, wow. I love your confidence. And I don't mean that in a patronizing way, because you, know, you need to have that, have that optimism, but you've kind of really spelled out what the context and characteristics are. But that last point you make, you know about pricing? It's, it's, it's a huge, huge thing, which is obviously self-evident, in terms of how despite having this ambitious strategy, you can move to a place that will democratize access, because that's the key thing, it's a people-centered approach. But I'm not gonna ask you to come back on this point, but about how do you democratize access, but also, I hope that our Zoom audience and those who are plugging in from all over Africa, what's your view on what you've heard, whether, you know, is this, is this an ambition that's possible? I'm gonna, uh, and thank you, Amani, for that, uh, as ever, very, very kind of clear focus, but also not, not, not ducking the key issues that we need to focus on. I'm gonna move swiftly on to Commissioner Thierry Henry, uh, Thierry Breton, apologies for that. Um, so, are you with us, Thierry? Of course, yes, I am with you, yes. Hello, hello, a very warm welcome to your first um, EU Africa Debating Africa series. Very pleased to have you. You've heard from um, colleagues so far, and you've heard the, the sense of uh, optimism and the, uh, the challenges that, that lay ahead. From your perspective, someone who's like in the job of really uh, focusing on the internal market, both in Europe, but also have had a, a long history in telecommunications as well. From your perspective, tell us, what's the potential and the gain for er Africa being an early adopter in digital technologies to transform its economy and its outlook? Over to you, Thierry. Well, thank you very much again for uh, having me together with you. Yeah, it's uh, both uh, uh, an honor and, uh, and a pleasure. And for everyone who know me a little bit, uh, um, it's true that uh, I have two hidden passions. The first one is, um, is of course, about, uh, about uh, everything related to technology and data. And the second one for Africa. And uh, I have so many friends here and part of my life is there too. So that's why when uh, I have been proposed to join you today, uh, I was enthusiastic to do it. 
even if, of course, uh, both you and uh, Amani uh, uh, said almost everything that I wanted to say, but I will say it with my own words. Um, uh, again, um, um, I have been working a lot, a lot, uh, spending so much time in in uh, in, uh, in your continent. Uh, that I, I, I realize myself the creativity, the unbelievable creativity and imagination of, mm -hmm. the, of the young forces in the digital space and area. It is amazing. Uh, the number of ideas, um, um, uh, 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 the, uh, the proposal of startups. Uh, innovation is unbelievable. So I just wanted to tell you first that I know by experience that when we are talking to digital, it is something extremely, extremely close to um, to all your uh, fellow uh, citizens uh, on uh, the uh, African continent. Uh, this is not uh, something far. This is something uh, they are living with. Even if I agree uh, with what Amani said, uh, we have a problem of connectivity. We have a problem of prices. We have many issue. But we'll see how we will be able to um, to tackle all these issues. Uh, and, uh, and and by the way, I am a strong believer of the fact that in order to be able to uh, to fight uh, against the digital divide uh, in Africa, uh, um, including um, um, versus uh, 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 cities and and, and uh, rural uh, 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 location, uh, probably it will be tremendous to see how we could use uh, probably also satellite infrastructure. Uh, I'm a strong believer of the fact that uh, this is something where we could find both public and par private partnership uh, to do it and to be able to offer at a reasonable, very reasonable price, uh, high uh, speed internet access to, uh, to, to everyone. But this being said, um, uh, when it comes to digital, I would like to, um, to convey Three messages, and of course, we'll be ready to uh, to develop it uh, uh, during the conversation we we'll have uh, together. Um, first, yes, uh, uh, not only we cannot ignore, but it's absolutely obvious uh, that uh, there is a huge potential to create uh, uh, growth and jobs through uh, the digital transformation and uh, through uh, data economy. Uh, in order to do this. Uh, I just wanted to let you know that uh, I have a strong conviction, which is that um, uh, uh, we should work together. And when I say together, all together, including EU, uh, with um, uh, uh, with uh, um, uh, Africa, uh, to, uh, to to see how we could help uh, uh, you to um, to build your own uh, African digital single market. Uh, uh, that will allow for better economic and regional integration and boost, of course, uh, the uh, economic growth. That's really something extremely important. Um, uh, we, we, are, we paid the price here in Europe to have been for too long a fragmented market. Now, of course, and I'm a commissioner in charge of uh, the internal market, we are fighting to avoid borders. Uh, uh, we do this for goods, mm -hmm. uh, but we, do, we need to do this also for data. And, uh, and, and, and I really uh, uh, support uh, this uh, idea and initiative. We worked a lot here. And, uh, uh, and again, that's something you tell that we will be ready to, uh, uh, to, um, to work together with you. The second thing, of course, is that uh, um, uh, it has been mentioned, but I would like to say it again. Uh, there is really a, a, a need for connectivity. I already mentioned it. Uh, that's a very important issue and also uh, for the development of skills and for e-skills. And, and I can give you a lot of testimony of, uh, of how impressed I have been with the, uh, the quality of, um, of um, um, uh, African universities uh, in, uh, in IT, uh, uh, the quality of, uh, of the uh, academic environment. The cooperation here could be, uh, could be great. Uh, uh, but, and also, by the way, something that is important uh, to me and to Utah, uh, uh, because I know we spoke about it. Um, uh, of course, this is a little bit related to uh, the uh, education in science, because at the end of the day, yes, if you are good in science and in technology, it's better. But uh, I, I have been always impressed to see um, in so many countries uh, on, on, on the African continent, the fact that um, that uh, uh, there is a lot of 
um, uh, young ladies and uh, um, girls and young ladies uh, 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 having the appetite to do it. And I'm a, a strong believer that, uh, that uh, we, not only we need to encourage them, but uh, that they're, 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 they are uh, definitely are also a very strong potential uh, for, um, mm. for this opportunity and, of course, resources to be big players in this digital economy. Uh, the third thing, of course, is that I, I, I mentioned it, but I would like to say it again uh, with my words. Uh, um, uh, the EU stands definitely ready uh, to support Africa. You can definitely count, of course, on Futa, on Utah, but also on myself, as much as you believe will be needed uh, uh, to help to build um, uh, you, you, human-centric uh, uh, digital economy and society based, of course, on, uh, on common values of democracy and fundamental rights. And, um, and, 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 and that, of course, we are ready to launch um, a partnership for, for digital transformation between the EU and, um, and Africa. So that's just what I wanted to say at, uh, at the beginning. Then, of course, I will be ready to discuss with you about uh, what we could put in this uh, partnership. Uh, discuss, of course, uh, together with you on the, the challenges, but I many mentioned uh, already uh, um, a few of them, and um, and many other issues, including again in um, in training and uh, and helping startups. Um, thank you, Thierry. Thank you very much. And I erroneously referred to you as the footballer. I do apologise for that. I will not uh, forget that. I do apologise. I, I, I hope you forgive me for that. But the, what you've said is absolutely fine. I think people will, uh, and I forgive me for saying this, people will want to know what does that mean in practice? I think our audience and others partners say, those are fine words. How do we turn those into practical actions when we think about the, what we heard from Amani about pricing, what we know about access, what we know about the population growth, what, uh, and we know that what's happened in other places where you have a population growth of size that we're gonna have in Africa, there'll be a scramble for Africa in terms of a, a marketplace. And how do we make sure that we do, you know, it doesn't become a scramble that creates in further inequality, but lifts the play and makes and le levels the playing ground? So I'm going to open it up to other colleagues to come in. Um, Onika? Yes, uh, a thank very you very much. Very warm welcome to you. Please briefly introduce yourself and where are you? And your question. Certainly. Uh, my name is Onika Makwakwa. I am the Africa head of Africa for the Alliance for Affordable Internet at the World Wide Web Foundation. I am sitting right now in Johannesburg, South Africa. Very warm welcome to you. Uh, yeah, great. So I've got just some quick remarks. Um, uh, th there is a need for sustained investment in digital development in Africa in general, and it requires that all players do their part uh, to achieve affordable, not only affordable, but also meaningful connectivity mm -hmm. for all, uh, women and girls included uh, in particular. The World Bank Digital Infrastructure Moonshot uh, report mm -hmm. estimates that $109 billion in dollars of investments are needed to bring affordable and quality universal access to Africa by 2030. Uh, even if the private sector could mobilize half of that, uh, through natural growth, the rest must be covered by governments and their development partners, including through uh, design of uh, public partnerships uh, uh, agreements. Investments in infrastructure alone are not sufficient. Mm -hmm. uh, these, uh, there needs to be investment in policy frameworks that will incentivize investments, plus investments in digital skills and content development. Infrastructure alone will not go far. Our skills are really key. And lastly, uh, the device affordability is also quite key. COVID-19 has made that clear. Smartphones are a start, but are not sufficient for e-learning, uh, keeping up business systems in check. So, uh, you know, I, I would conclude by saying invest, cooperate, partner, and measure results to ensure all benefits um, equally, uh, all, all, all Africans benefit equally and equitably. Absolutely. Thank you. Onika, thank you for that statement. And you know, no one will disagree with your words. Those are fine words, okay? Everyone thinks that that should happen. What would you like to see happen very specifically? Uh, where this is a conversation about EU-Africa relations of the future on digitalization. Tell me the one or two things you think should happen specifically, both either in Africa or from, from the EU. 
in, in Africa, I think we need to um, adopt policies that get us to universal access. Okay. Uh, we all countries in Africa, or at least most of them, have universal service and access funds. We need to see results out of those universal service and access funds. Good. Achieve universal access for all. Okay, excellent. Thank you. That's very, very specific and a very, very clear policy objective. Thank you very much. I'm now going to invite one of our trustees, I believe, who've joined us. Uh, Isabel? You, uh, no, you're on, you're on mute. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Hello, Hello very warm welcome. Do, do introduce yourself first. Uh, thank you. So I'm Isabel Durand and I'm the Deputy Secretary General of UNCTAD. UNCTAD is the UN Conference for Trade and Development. And uh, this, this issue related to digitalization for development is really key for UNCTAD. And concretely, what are we doing? We are assessing country by country, in not all, all the countries of Africa, but a, a big majority of them, we are assessing the different capacities of, of the country, the, e the ecosystem for digitalization. What happened with data protection? What happened with uh, cybersecurity? What happened all the, the ecosystem and not only the connectivity? Connectivity is key, but so it was just mentioned, it's not enough. And I think that this, this assessment helped the countries to establish their own strategy. And of course, there are 50, 54 countries in Africa we have the African free trade area in process, nice, but the difference between the countries are in Rome mm -hmm. and between Benin or, or, or Kenya or Botswana, it's very different regarding the capacity of the government, also the capacity to be interministerial and not only with an IT or ICT minister or secretary of state, but a real strategy for the government. So my, my question or my suggestion to yeah. Mr. Breton and yeah. Madame uh, is really to dedicate a part of the budget for digitalization for development. I think that we need that it would, it would not be a technical issue, but it could become a development issue. It's so important, it was mentioned. For, so Isabel, quite job. specifically, what would you like to see happen? The money, obviously, but what do you want that money spent on? Not only the money, the yeah. money is absolutely necessary, especially in the COVID-19 period where economically the situation is dramatic. Exactly. In a lot of but I think that we have to have a big alliance. You know that the economic benefit of the, the digital economy, 90% China and US, 10% uh, Africa, Europe, and the rest of the world, 90, 10. So it's why we are in the same boat, if I could say. It's why we have not only to have a nice partnership, we have really to work concretely, country by country, in order to, to avoid the losers, because some countries in Africa could be the losers if some, some others could win with this, this, this digitalization. Okay, Isabel, I'll bring both the com uh, commissioner in a moment. Uh, but I'm going to thank you for that. That was very, very clear and it's very specific. Uh, I wanted to sp first go to Arthur. Arthur M. Are you there? Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm Arthur Mis Minsat. I'm the head of uh, Africa Unit at the OECD Development Center. Uh, can welcome. you hear me? I hear you very clearly. Thank you very much and welcome okay. to you. Thank you. I'd like to thank the very distinguished panel. Uh, my question is about what are the next steps for the uh, cooperation between the European Union and the African Union uh, in the context of COVID because of the digitalization. I'm asking this uh, in the context of um, the uh, flagship that we are developing with the support of the European Union and together with the African Union on digital transformation for quality jobs. It's an area of, of uh, concern uh, both in, uh, in Africa and in Europe. Uh, we saw in our survey that the second key area for, um, as seen as a threat for digitalization is com international competition uh, in, in the digital sector sure. that could impede the creation of jobs in Africa. And what we highlighted is with regards to the universal X are three key areas for, for this intervention. One mm -hmm. is with regards to the digital divide um, improving the diffusion of digital technologies and access, in particular to digital cities, because the digital divide are acute in the rural and urban areas in particular. And that could be a nice, effective way with a strong multiplier effect to diffuse digital technology. However, this is not only about, um, about infrastructure, uh, but also about a whole spectrum of policies. And for that, enhancing okay. the cooperation at the continental and regional level is key. Uh, and there's a lot to learn from Europe in the areas of uh, roaming, in the areas of data protection. At the moment, only 26 African countries have data protection in place. Sure. So a lot could be learned 
um, from, from there. And thirdly, it's about the informal sector where uh, the population working in the informal sector is going to continue to grow uh, in the future. So there is a great need for continuing to invest in skills. Sure. In and that area. My friend, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Just, uh, I, well, I want to urge all the contributors. We know a lot of this, right? What are the specific things you're looking for? And I, so I really want to urge our contributors to think about that because with these are fine words, right? But there's an opportunity here. You have, a, you have both the AU and the EU saying we're listening. We want to engage. We want to identify things that we can do to move things forward. So I would urge all of you to come up with very specific things that we should be doing. So sorry to kind of cut you short, but have a thought, think about that. Perhaps put it on a chat or whatever. But your points are very well made. And if you can want to come back with a comment, please do so. And I want to move on to, I hope there are also in the audience, digital tech entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs per se, women in the audience who are I involved in this, please, we really want to hear from you. Come, don't be shy, engage. This is a great opportunity um, to engage with commissioners, but also to share with each other what some of the issues are. So before, while I give you a chance to think about that, so please do, be brave, engage, uh, raise your virtual hand. I'm gonna go to Commissioner uh, 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 Terry. Terry, uh, do you wanna re respond to some of the issues that you've just heard before I bring in Amani? Well, um, I, 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 as you said, a lot, a lot of things have been said, and 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 I, I just wanted to tell you that um, uh, uh, we, we will not be able, of course, to um, to to, uh, to find solution while uh, um, uh, driving uh, ideas here and there. I'm a strong believer that it is a time to um, uh, uh, based on on the conversation that we have. Uh, to um, uh, to um, to see the kickstart of a partnership for digital transformation, maybe in the next EU um, uh, African Union summit, in order to create uh, really uh, uh, an even stronger partnership with okay. Africa, where we could have all these discussions. Because of, of course, uh, we 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 have we, we have the, we have solutions, we have ideas, we yeah. could we could bring uh, our, our our forces together. We could have also uh, the benefits to. Um, to, uh, to, to see some, some, some fantastic uh, um, uh, um, uh, uh, success stories. Uh, you mentioned uh, uh, startups, but not only. Let me give you one example that I saw in, the, in, in, in some countries when I was working, uh, which, was, uh, which was amazing. Uh, it has been a comparison uh, made by many of the price of connectivity with India. <laughs> it's true that, that India was pretty successful while um, um, uh, uh, training uh, um, uh, uh, its young forces and and being able to uh, to to be able to um, uh, uh, to uh, uh, um, to uh, 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 train uh, 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 millions of engineers in IT and let me tell you something we will need the world will need uh, this workforce mm. globally we need engineers uh, like hell in this sector. Mm. And I know that there is a lot of appetite and resources in Africa to do this. And by the way, uh, uh, working together with Europe, we are all the, on the same time zone. Uh, we could work uh, uh, really uh, uh, between uh, EU and between, um, uh, and between uh, um, uh, Africa uh, much better. Uh, I knew that in my previous life, uh, we had a lot of uh, um, um, uh, John resources uh, 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 in, in India, and mm -hmm. I decided to do it now in Africa mm -hmm. from both sides, and it works, and it okay. works. Mm -hmm. We have many examples like this. The, the, another thing that I wanted to tell you is that, uh, uh, you know, it has been mentioned, but a um, uh, 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 big challenge is the existence of regulatory and administrative barriers mm -hmm. and gaps lack of flexibility and uh, adaptability of regulators. And here also, I really think that we could work together to, uh, to adapt an effective uh, regulatory framework. Uh, 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 and this will be, by the way, essential for the private sector. And thirdly, um, you mentioned it, uh, I'm in charge of the internal market. Mm. Uh, we, we organize ourselves in the industrial ecosystem. And believe me, we have 14 ecosystems now organizing, if I may say so, the, the, the internal market of the EU in every single uh, um, um, uh, ecosystem could be uh, from uh, could be from uh, uh, automotive could be from uh, digital could be from health and so on i'm always asking companies to bring also with their partners uh, in africa 
So we try to enlarge this ecosystem also in Africa. And guess what? We are using a lot of digital tools to do it. So we have here a lot of concrete because we need mm -hmm. concrete examples Indeed. to be able to share together. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, before I bring you back in, Amani, if I may, I just was going to bring in um, uh, Lassin, who is Kone, who is the uh, you know head of Digital Africa, just to uh, make a reference to what he's heard so far. You have the great opportunity to be able to set out um, one of you know what, what the implications are for a single market, digital single markets, but also you see it from an, a number of vantage, vantage points. Over to you. Your ah. Thank, thank, thank you very much uh, for having me. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be here and participate in this. Yeah, I, uh, I listened to my sister, Dr. Amani, uh, yeah. the enthusiasm in Africa and uh, the challenges facing us, as well as I also listened to the audience from uh, uh, on the ONICA and OECD and back to the Commissioner Cherry. What uh, Dr. Amani is saying is actually, uh, we, we have a right to be enthusiastic because it is a reality. And this is one of the reasons Smart Africa was actually uh, uh, created, founded uh, back in 2013 by seven head of the state. Now, today we are 30 head of the state, say 30 country members. Mm -hmm. And the main focus of the Smart Africa is to transform Africa into a single digital market. And if you see all of these vibe happening, uh, the reason it is happening because in Smart Africa, what we did we divide every single country has a flagship project. For example, Kenya is a digital economy. Rwanda is a, digital, a smart city. Niger is a smart villages. Tunisia is a startup act. Senegal is the broadband. And Ghana is a, a Pan-African uh, payment system. And recently Benin added a digital identifications. Mm -hmm. I, this is an example of the pieces of the puzzle of the digital transformations in Africa. And it, it is really happening. But one thing we need to know, if I really want to address some of the key points that I listen from the audience uh, regarding the connectivity, it's very important at this point to mention, in fact, 23% of African population have a broadband connectivity, exactly. and we have a 48% usage gap. Exactly. Usage gap, 48%, it means there is a connectivity, but people cannot afford either the price that Dr. Manu referred to or smart devices, devices that Onika spoke about. Exactly. So if we can gain just 48% on the top of 23, we'll be at 71%. We only have a coverage gap of 29%, which is back to what the World Bank says, a funding gap, which is 109 billion uh, US dollars for Africa. So what is really happening, it is true. And it's very easy to understand. It's here also important to note that. Africa today, which counts 1.3 billion population, where close to 800 million represent youth less than 30 years old. We exactly. call them the Z, we call them the Z generation, yeah. which means that close to 61% are born after the end of the colonization. And they are themselves, you know, they think they see themselves as entitled to equal opportunities Absolutely. as their peers in Europe or elsewhere. So this fact actually leads us to conclude that what stand, what, 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 what stand or, or, or what, what, the, what, what uh, the fact of the, the fact, this fact lead us to conclude that the stand as a ground for the development partnership between EU and Africa back in the days in the past, before I was even born, <laughs> is no longer sustainable. Mm. And there's an urgent need for a paradigm shift, especially with the digital cooperation in the fourth industrial revolution for both continent digital transformation. So if we are to make a sustainable social economic development within the continent and both continent interests in this new paradigm, it is important to point out that sustainability in this new area is driven in time by the innovation that our youth people have it in the presence of an inclusive participation of the population as a whole, which brings us back to the identification of people in Africa. Remember that. There are half billion people unidentified in Africa. They do not have some form of ID, paper Precisely. or digital. Yeah. So, and that can only be done within an adaptive and fast-paced regulatory environment, policy environment in our continent in order to truly embrace the emerging technology. That's, that's excellent. But, and I'm, there is a but, 
So how do you close that gap and the investment uh, opportunity? Who, where, what, what do you need to leverage for that to happen from the world or the EU or from within Africa? If I could just focus on you on that, because that's the specific stuff, because you just set out. I mean, we know what the, op the issues are, but the other issue is about the investment in R&D. Where countries have seen exponential growth, the percentage of R&D to GDP growth is significant. We've seen that in Japan, we've seen that in China, we've seen that in the US, elsewhere. So how do we close that gap? What do you need? What is it you need, what you think Africa, smart Africa needs to move that, to close that gap and to move in that sustainable fashion? Very important question. So talking about the connectivity gap, I would call it funding gap, which is the one, uh, 109 billion. If you look at that, there are three kind of gap, two kind of gap, coverage gap and usage gap. For us to close this usage gap, what we are doing now with the broadband commission led by uh, uh, UNESCO and ITU, where Smart Africa is part of it, and the chairman is His Excellency, the chairman of Smart Africa, President Kagame. So what we're doing, looking at the universal access fund, which are collected from the operator and said, Okay, when we talk about connectivity, we have to think about meaningful connectivity. Sure. It means you have people need to have access to devices, one, and they need to have access to the content. Africa, we do have that because we have young people developing application. So taking part of that universal access fund to pump it into the financing, subsidizing the equipment. Today, look at how many children today, children today are sitting home because not because the school is not connected, they do not have a device to access this. Okay, to access all right. The, the school. So we want to take part of the universal access fund, which are being collected in many African countries today to contribute to basically the, uh, the, the, the to, to give a boost to the uh, access okay. to the device in order to gain that. Okay, great. Thank you. Amani, can I bring you back? Are you ready for me? Yeah, I am. <laughs> <laughs> I like the way you say that. It's like you're, you know, you're precipitating. Oh my gosh, shall I take a deep breath? No, go, go for it. <laughs> Okay, uh, thank you all then for the questions and for the comments and for the intervention, especially for my brother, uh, Lassina Kony. Quick answers or quick comments. Uh, uh, the Africa digitalization is led by Africa and it's homegrown. And it exactly takes care also of the fact that uh, we are not at the same level. So it is a differentiated approach also taking into account the fact that uh, 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 there are, uh, we are 55 countries. However, as, as mentioned by Onike, yes, policies are very important. But what is also very important is to harmonize those policies and for whatever platform or whatever uh, 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 digital uh, uh, sector we develop, that there is interoperability. And that's what the role that the African Union is doing, because our aim is what? Our aim is also to create one continent. It's regional integration. So uh, I, I, I was hoping that Lassina maybe dwells a little bit more on, on that aspect. So a single digital African market means that we need harmonized uh, regulations, uh, 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 interoperability of uh, platforms and uh, of digitalization. And, uh, from that, of course, we can learn from uh, uh, from Europe. And the world learns also from Africa. This is also uh, another comment that I wanted to say to OECD because, uh, sorry, to UNESCO. Uh, so it, it's not a one-way direction when it comes to learning. The world has learned also from Africa. We, are, we invited mobile money for the world, you know, and, uh, and we are leading in that, in that sense. And the innovation that is coming to Africa is not in response or is not related to, what, to other contexts outside the continent. Uh, it is something com completely new for the world because it, it really responds sure. to our questions. I just take the example of energy mm. and uh, uh, the, the mobile kits, you know, the energy kits uh, using mobile money. This is, you know, a very African solution to a very African problem. And that's what we want to see, something that is also homegrown and that uh, 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 solves our own uh, problem. Uh, the issue of uh, uh, safety, absolutely. And now safety, you know, we, we developed the African Union Convention on, uh, on, on cybersecurity and, and uh, personal data protection. Practically what, five countries signed this, uh, 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 this convention? Now everyone is aware of the threat and everyone that now that the whole world is, and all Africans, you know, turns into digital, everyone is aware of the threat, especially on children. And I wanted to bring that into the, the conversation, children and safety of children online. 
to uh, Isabel Durand. Yes, of course, and uh, I believe we have we are working with on that. For us, digitalization is not about a transition from one technology to another. It's about transformation for development, and uh, that's that's what uh, uh, what we are talking to our partners uh, about. Uh, and on partnership, uh, I'm, I'm you you all know me by now. Those who have been following this series or outside this series, I say things as I as I think them. Uh, I think there is enough. Uh, we we talked enough. We have uh, an EU EU partnership document on on digitalization. The African Union has a strategy for digitalization. We contributed and we led the the World Bank uh, uh, Digital Economy for Africa document, and it's quantified uh, per sector per item. I think the time is to implement. So Great. I'm uh, glad it's about time. You preempted my question, it's Mani. About time you know, all partners, each one, you know, developing okay. a, a strategy for Africa and this for Africa. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. <laughs> but we are in a different context. We have, it is happening as we speak. The okay. world has turned digital and not all Africa is ready. So enough talk, get into the business. And yes, we do need finance. And finance has to go into implementation, not yet, not, not to uh, develop yet again. Another um, document on why Africa okay. needs digitalization, on whether, whether or not it is useful for development. Amani, thank, thank you. Very you. Much. No, thank you very much. You preempted my last question, as you always do, because I was going to say, fine words, what needs to happen? So your message is, let's just get on and do it, because actually we know what we need to happen. Is that right? You're saying, we know what needs to happen, just let's get on with it. Okay, I'll bring in commissioners uh, in, in later. I want to move back to the audience, and I only have less than 10 minutes or just more. So those of you who are watching, those who, you know, the, you know as I said, the women, the entrepreneurs, others, come in, use the space to get a, have, have your verse, voice heard. Aleu. Aleu. Hello. Yes, hello. Um, I'm Ali from Startup Incubator Gambia. Excellent. So my question is in regards it's, it's in, re, it's in regards to um, access the the inclusiveness or the inclusion gap in mm -hmm. terms of transformation. Um, in recent due to COVID nineteen, we have seen a lot of transformation of businesses and especially small and medium sized businesses into technology, working from home and adopting with new product and solutions. But there is this um, the transformation has shown that there's a huge um, include inequality in terms of access to to technology, especially when it comes to developing countries, example like the Gambia. What is the EU and the African Union doing in terms of making sure the high cost of internet um, access to data that is available is reduced to allow the marginalized communities and rural um, um, development areas to able to have equal access to capitalize on this digital transformation and reap the benefit by you know, growing their businesses and also taking care of their families. So I think that is yeah. one of uh, the, the questions that I have for. Thank you, and you know, thank you for saying that, because that's why I wanted to, you know, from the ground, you're saying actually, how do you create, because what you're saying is the digital divide is huge, but what are we going to do, in, in, in borrowing from uh, Amani, to get on with the action, because we all know the issue, but how do we actually solve it? I'm going to move to Irene, Irene O, Irene, Irene O. Where are you? Um, are you with us? No. I can. I think I can hear you. Are you having difficult? Okay. Uh, uh, can you hear me now? We can. Welcome. Tell us who you are and where are you based right now? Okay. My name is Irene Ochem. I am the CEO of the Africa Women Innovation and Entrepreneurship Forum. Welcome. So uh, from the name, you can figure out. I'm calling in from Cape Town. Yeah. Um, so we are about uh, driving the um, development of women as um, entrepreneurs. And my question is, um, as we have seen um, from the impact of COVID, there is a gender di dimension um, to that. And um, then if we talk about um, digitalization, women has always uh, have always been um, um, marginalized. There is a, a huge gap there. I would like to know um, what uh, the EU and the AU, what you think about um, you know, bridging that gap and what can be done? How, what kind of uh, special attention um, can we do, um, give to women in terms of um, um, designing um, support um, programs or, or something? Uh, we have seen from COVID that um, a lot of this um, gap has even become more um, enhanced, more enlarged, okay. you know, especially 
Yeah, so uh, that's my very... No, but Irene, sorry, question. the reason I didn't want to cut across you, is because I think, tell them what you want. What would you like? I heard the question. What I would like you have their ear, they're listening, both of them, uh, both sides. What do you want specifically that you'd want from them? Yeah, specifically what I would want from them is um, um, the opportunity to design programs, specific women-focused programs, you know, to address the issue of the gender gap in accessing them, uh, digitalized uh, uh, opportunities in the digital economy, and to also support women for skills, for employment, and um, for job opportunities and self-employment. So uh, specific programs that focus on women. But designed with women is what I'm hearing also from you, which is a critical, important yeah. difference in terms of what people have done historically. Thank you. And let's hope they listen and they'll come back, come back to you. Zainab. Hello. Oh, hello. Hello. A warm welcome. Uh, Say who you are and where are you based right now in your question. Okay, I'm joining from Cairo, Egypt. Uh, uh, my name is Zainab Zidane and I'm um, an alumni of the Young Mediterranean Voices program. I'm here uh, as a peer facilitator and um, I'm so happy for joining today to this debate, especially because the program this year is operating online and there are many um, uh, many things that has been uh, we are noticing this year um, online like other years because we this year we are able to include people from hard to reach communities in Egypt like from the far south for example these programs were not generalized for them and and people if they would like to join before uh, had to travel for example to Cairo for seven to eight hours for example uh, but actually this year there was a fund there is a fund for people who are joining from these places because internet access also uh, was a kind of weak or not affordable so there there is a fund this year for people people from harder rich communities. Um, the question here is like how to generalize these kind of funds or these kind of, um, of support for people from harder rich community. And the other question also concerning hate speech and cyberbullying, because actually this program is designed for debating a leadership and uh -huh. we're training young people uh, how to come up with policies and recommendations. And this year we're able to, to manage like topics of hate speech and getting people from different cultures within the same country and also from uh, different Arab countries to gather, like to learn about their cultures and their backgrounds. So okay. this year, like, yeah, yeah, participants from Egypt Egypt, like we're able to to get into deeper uh, such topics like that, and to also to get introduced the, from, as a first hand with these people. Okay. Um, they all were also on, uh, they were only before seeing in media. So it, it it is very important like to invest more in these programs okay. as an online version uh -huh. because. Um, this year we're able like to get uh, over many stereotypes uh, presented by the mainstream media discourse and it was very clear but the question here after these programs return uh, program return to be uh, uh, offline how can we invest more on a digital okay then okay to include, no uh, yeah, no thank, thank you. you no you've raised some <laughs> really important topics then because especially that point about you know the hate speech and the the, the the modality of digital being able to create a different kind of narrative and engagement but also that thing is you know a, a good program comes and then it dies and actually funders governments need to understand how do you create longevity when something works so what i'm going to move to is uh thierry thierry uh, to respond to some of the issues you've just heard then I'll ask you, Amani, and then we'll conclude with you because time is running out. So, Thierry, over to you. Your, your comments on what you've heard so far and some, some passing, you know, some reflective mo comments on, on this debate as we move forward. No, it is a very, very um, a vibrant, uh, a, a lot of experience coming from the ground. Um, uh, so, of course, I, I, you understand that, uh, and, and you, you asked many times for concrete answers, concrete actions, and you're absolutely right. And, and this is really why I strongly believe that we need to sit together to put together um, um, uh, uh, all these requests. Of course, uh, uh, we will not be able to address all, no. but of course, uh, 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 we may find a lot of avenues uh, to, uh, to play uh, a role together in this uh, digital space. Let me give you, I gave you a few, few examples. By the way, I fully agree with what, what has been said about the gender, gender issue. 
even if I'm t I told you also that, that it would be seen also if we put in place the right programs, the right funding as opportunities. Um, um, I am absolutely convinced that, that in addition to everything which has been said, um, um, there is tremendous opportunity uh, uh, and, and potential resources uh, uh, for, for, for Africa, for the continent, and for the world uh, in, the, in, the, in the decade to come uh, with having more and more uh, specialized uh, young talent being trained and work uh, in, in, um, in Africa. I know that already some countries, uh, and this is some, some, something that we could help also uh, with the right financing, has developed uh, the ability to have uh, HPCs. Uh, I know, for example, in Senegal, I know, for example, in Ivory Coast, and this HPC supercomputer has been installed now, and they're, they're, they're doing a lot of new applications uh, in health, uh, in artificial intelligence, um, in um, uh, agriculture, in many, many things, helping again the academic environment, the new talent, uh, companies, startups, to work also having also this infrastructure. This is also something, an avenue, that I think we need to, um, uh, to evaluate in this, uh, uh, what I'm calling from uh, uh, my wish, uh, uh, um, uh, partnership for digital transformation. In a nutshell, um, we need to have concrete example. Uh, I, I'm in charge of internal markets, so per definition, I am concrete. Concrete with uh, asking companies to work uh, cross-border. Mm -hmm. Concrete uh, uh, in, in, uh, in education to have the right programs. Concrete in, in, in investing in some key technologies we're talking about infrastructure, uh, talking about uh, in telecommunication, but it's not only what we need. We need also satellite infrastructure. We need also HPC infrastructure, AI infrastructure, mm -hmm. and this is something where we could where we could work. And to put all this together again, we need also a, 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 a digital single market uh, in in Africa with with the right regulatory framework. This is all these kind of things that I think will be very interesting to discuss together in this uh, next EU African Union Summit. That's my proposal. Oh, great, good. So we have a shopping list, we have a menu of the key things that need to happen. And uh, borrowing from Amani, but we don't need to consult anymore or to think about what the needs are. We just need a plan of action. Amani, I ask you to be brief in your commentary in response to what you've heard so far. Yeah, but we do need to consult, and that's uh, and that, uh, and this is the basis for w uh, on which we uh, developed our EU AU uh, uh, strategy for digitalization in Africa. Uh, the participants were from the civil society, private sector, okay. uh, uh, on both sides, and uh, uh, different organizations. So we do need to consult always, and except that now under COVID nineteen, uh, uh, some uh, sectors sub uh, sectors came to the fore. Uh, 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 like, for instance, e-education, e-health, uh, 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 e-commerce, uh, uh, and of course, the safety issue I mentioned before. Uh, I believe we are at a historic moment, really, at the true sense of the word, historic moment. Uh, 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 this pandemic can be, for Africa, a, a, a great opportunity, and we have to use it to our advantage. It, it can give the necessary push we, we, we needed and we probably some were waiting for to, to leave from. And I believe with the help and support of all our partners, especially our oldest and strongest partner, uh, the EU, we, we can do that leap. And I'm confident in our youth and in our population to, to make a gigantic uh, uh, leap. Uh, uh, as I said, the ingenuity, creativity, and, uh, and the resilience of, uh, of Africa and African people has uh, astounded everybody sure. every time we have a major uh, uh, situation or crisis. So I'm absolutely confident, and I st stand by what I said. We're going to make uh, this giant step uh, with the help and support and the partnership of uh, all our partners. Sure, and Amani, thank you. And, I, and I, both of you didn't address the question. I know you were out of time, but I'm not going to bring you back. Is that thing about inequality? 
You heard very loudly uh, yeah, from yeah, an yeah, No, you don't have to, but no. I think it's a very key no, no, point that was raised. Just, uh, say brief. Yes, for my sister who asked about inequality, about But the also gender, the brother uh, that yeah. was talking about, tra you know, about not being able to have yeah, access. Yeah, there, there is. We do have a program. Please get in touch with me. I'm putting my... Please look at your chat. Uh, I am responding to everyone. Uh, uh, Excellent. So you have... Good for you. And also uh, about the urban-rural uh, urban divide. It's uh, an important question. Uh, also, we can address that. And yes, I do have okay. issues now the time. You have to manage the time. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. I want to now conclude, coming back to you full circle, Yuta. Very interesting conversation. Yes. You know, doesn't it feel very, like very the fun. time runs out too quickly? You want to carry on. It's a real pity, isn't it? But anyway, I want you to yeah. offer you the, far, you know, the last words because, you know, you've been listening to all of these. Uh, there's a menu here that people are talking about action. Um, some words mm -hmm. and reflection from you. Thank you. I, I would like to make actually uh, four very short uh, points. And the first one is that... Um, I very much agree with uh, Armani. I think, you know, there are plenty of things uh, in Africa regarding digitalization and technology and uh, new innovations that we Europeans are able to learn from Africa. So I think this is definitely the two-way uh, relationship. And, and that's also the reason why we wanted to change our narrative, the paradigm uh, uh, in our new strategy with Africa. So uh, I th just wanted to point this. The, the other one I, I wanted to make, uh, the other point is that I very much uh, liked what Isabella and also Latina was, uh, was telling, that mm. uh, at the same time, we need to make some effer, uh, effort uh, and, and take some measures uh, at the continental level. I think there are plenty of things we need to do at, at the country level. I really like this idea of what Isabella raised, that we need to have this kind of a tailor-made country strategies mm -hmm. regarding uh, digitalization and uh, tr digital transformation. So I think this is definitely something we will uh, work together uh, with our partner countries. Then uh, the third point is link between the digitalization and, and development. And, uh, and, and it was also raised that is it possible to earmark funding uh, for, for that purpose. And I would say that um, whenever the parliament uh, is uh, uh, adopted or the new uh, financial framework for the EU is adopted in the parliament, mm -hmm. we start to programming. And of course, uh, one of the pri prioritization uh, for, for, for one of the priorities for, for the EU, and I think also for the Africa in the coming programming is digitalization. The other one is, of course, green, uh, green transition, but the second one is digitalization. So I definitely believe that there are also possibilities to tailor-made these kind of a specific programs uh, for women regarding digitalization and access to, uh, to internet. And then the third point uh, I, I wanted to make, I fully agree, my dear, with my dear colleague, uh, Terry, that uh, I hope that digitalization would be on the agenda of the African Union, European Union summit. Now it seems that we need to postpone that because of the COVID-19, but whenever it will be held, I think this will be one of the main topics uh, of, of the agenda. And then the last, I think uh, uh, it's important to, to announce that we will also collect all the messages uh, from Thank the you. chat box. And I think, you know, I just want to, uh, tell you that uh, your your opinions and questions are valuable and, and they will be uh, really, uh, we, we are going to go them through. Jutta, thank you so much for that. I want to conclude now by, what I want to do is thank the audience firstly, actually, because you make the content of this. It's why we're here. So I want to thank all of you for joining on Zoom and live stream. Continue, though. Don't give up. And I'm sorry we couldn't take some of the questions that people want, had raised, but you, we, it's only an hour. Um, and, and I do apologize for that. That's why I get in there early. I'll send. But the conversation doesn't stop. You've got the hashtag. You've got our email. Make sure you continue this debate. And as, as you just said, we, are, we have a team here collecting information and data from you that we want to compile into the next steps of this development. Uh, so thank you all very much. Thank you, Yuta, Thierry, um, obviously Amani, as ever, and Lasina for, for being here and engaging and directly so and being op open and honest because uh, that's what makes this better. I hope some of the data gets shifted that we know about in the future, but we've got a lot of work to do. And as, as, as Amani says, let's just get on with it. Thank you all very much. Be safe and take care. Bye-bye.